I'm out for the count. Oh, this is what happens when you're out of shape. What is up? Back at it with a little bit of an education video for you. So we're gonna drop some science and we're actually gonna get out there and put this science into practice. So today, I know I've done a video like this before, but this is gonna be a, a little bit different. We're talking about energy systems. So we're talking about cardio because one thing that I think Jake and I have a hard time with is people that think the best way to get in shape is just to come in, walk on a treadmill, do their elliptical day after day, 40 minutes a day when they're not getting the results they want. So how do you you get the results you want to get bigger faster stronger leaner how do you get these things at first you need to understand energy systems of the body so up here we have energy systems the first is the phosphagen system so phosphagen system think short term this is stuff that's under 10 seconds the reason why we take creatine phosphate is for this system right here ATP adenosine triphosphate turns into adenosine diphosphate as you're working out so this way when you take creatine you're saturating the muscle saturating your body with that and it donates into the phosphagen group. So just think this is short spurts, intense lifting under 10 seconds. Um, the next energy system we have is the aerobic system. The aerobic system, runners, long distance runners, think your cardio, your extended cardio people. So aerobic means with oxygen, because that's how the, that's how the system works. It uses oxygen to deliver to the muscles, to those body parts that are working. Now this increases blood flow. There's a lot of good things about LIS cardio. That's what this is right here. It's LIS cardio. It's not as taxing on your central nervous system, but what happens is to keep up with your body's quick adapt adaptation process, I guess you'd call it, your, your body's gonna adapt quickly to the stimulus you're throwing at it because you've all done, you should also incorporate this. This is HIT. This is high intensity interval training. And this is an anaerobic system, so that means without oxygen, without O2. So your body's actually using glycogen. Glycogen is like NOS for our bodies. Glycogen is carbohydrates. So if you're an athlete, if you're an athlete, this is why athletes shouldn't do keto diets in my opinion, because you need those carbs, you need that NOS to perform. So if you wanna perform better, if you wanna be stronger, if you wanna be faster, if you wanna be leaner, this is where you wanna play for your cardio. And again, this is gonna be 10 seconds to two minutes. So this is quick. This is get in, get out, boom. This is that, you know, that quarter mile, 10 seconds in a car type of a thing. You're using your big primary mover muscles. So your quads, your glutes, your, you know, if you're swimming, your shoulders, your back, and it is a all out run and gun. Like you think of something you can do for 10 seconds to two minutes and go all out. One good way to see if you're performing hit properly is the talk test. If you can talk while you're doing your hit, it's not, you're not going hard enough. But one other thing I want to just note on this video, the minute your form breaks down during your hit, you should stop. Because that's when our movement pattern, if we're going so hard, you're flailing all over the place, you're at risk of getting injured. We don't want to ever put ourselves at risk of getting injured. So if that movement pattern's off, if your form is crap, don't care you know, how hard you're going, you need to stop. And then again, one to two times per week, if you're just starting out with implementing HIT stuff into your workouts, this one time's gonna be more than enough. And then go back to some of your lift stuff on those other days. As you ramp it up, two, maybe even three, if you're a high level athlete, you're talking Olympic sprinter type people, but again, if you're lifting, you're taxing your central nervous system, um, if you're doing deadlifts and squats, so this is also gonna tax that, so just take notice of that. But this is what we're gonna be talking about today, and we're gonna talk a little bit about you know, my favorite outdoor workouts that you guys can do, you guys can give them a try, and then uh, we're actually gonna do one inside as well, so it's gonna be fun, I'm gonna get tired. All right guys, coming at you with quality content. Today's gonna be something you can use to get your ass in shape. That's me included. So what we're gonna be showing you, pretty much the five best high intensity, we're talking HIT, high intensity interval training. I'm gonna send it over to Jake real quick. He's gonna tell you a little bit about HIT. About high intensity interval training? Yes. What do you want me to tell him about it? Why we do it instead of just walking on a treadmill? Because you hate people walking on a treadmill. A lot of athletes that condition hard, they can eat whatever they want. Right because they go out and run hard. Right. And they end up being more athletic and they're in really good shape. Instead of the other option is destroy your metabolism, cut your calories and walk on a treadmill. Eh, doesn't sound fun to me at all. Exactly, yeah. and I appreciate you saying that. So today we're giving you 
kind of drill well these are drills that we have both done in college training for football biggest leanest meanest athletes on the planet i think are our nfl linebackers so that's typically how we like to train rugby players they're big they're muscular they're fast they're kind of everything that uh, i want to to be so a lot of these are football drills um and we're gonna give you guys our five best fat loss high intensity interval training workouts here let's do it like anything we do we always warm up so we're we're just gonna warm up you guys can watch it we're gonna roll that b-roll it's hot out here i don't know what else to say let's roll it <laughs> Jake's got his favorite Mac cleats on today. Jake came from getting ready to go on his cleats. What's he saying? What was he saying? He was just saying that you are uh, got your try-hard shoes on today. Oh, try-hard. I'm gonna go 30% 30, 30 away from my top speed. I'm gonna still beat uh, Steve on every rep. That's probably true. I had some cool Vapor Max cleats on. <laughs> so it's just the cleats. All right, the first one is an old football throwback. And depending on your body size, that's gonna determine the time you have to run the 110 yards in. So if you're super fast, we're gonna call you a DB, a safety, a wide receiver, a skilled position. You gotta run it under 17 seconds. That's under 15. Well, these guys aren't professional college football players. Let's let them know. All right. Coach Hutton says- seems easy as man. Coach Hutton says, yo, if you're an athlete, if you consider yourself a skilled position, wide receiver, running back, safety, corner, you gotta run this in under 15 seconds. 15 seconds or under, that's moving. If you're a bigger guy, more of a linebacker, tight end, fullback, you gotta run it under 17 seconds. And then if you're a big oaf, you just rumbling and stumbling down the field, you're a big dude, you'd be you know, an offense or a defensive lineman, you gotta run it under 19 seconds. So again, 110 yards. Doing it on a football field, starting at the zero yard line. And I'm neither. Uh, you get down. You got a minute of rest once you've completed it. What happens if they don't get it in their time, Coach Hutton? Add one on at the end? I mean, like a conditioning test would be getting your times, 16 reps, one minute rest. 16 reps. 16 reps. So like, that's what I'm saying. 15 seconds isn't hard. No. It's doing that 16 times with a minute rest. Gotcha. You guys have a friend to do these with keep each other accountable on time i'm talking to you guys because i'm trying to trying to stall a little bit what do you think we're doing these at? let's check on this one on this time i'm gonna throw my hand up when we get down there and we'll, we'll put it on the screen All right, so the next sprint, the next high intensity workout you guys can try, these are called half gassers. Now, from one side of the football field to the other, it's 53 yards. This is gonna require us to run down and back using the same times we did for our 110. So on this one, it's gonna require you to change some direction here. We're gonna have at least eight of these. Um, and again, try to meet them all under that time that we talked about earlier. So obviously, on these, usually less volume. Maintain the intensity. It can be hard to hold that for 16 reps. That's right. These are going to be a little bit harder. Changing direction. So, let's move on. I'm exhausted. Next, we're gonna do 60 yard shuttles. Now, this one is gonna re require you guys to know how far five yards is. So, we're gonna be running five back, 10 back, 15 back. That's a total of 60 yards. What we're gonna wanna do here, eight every minute on the minute. So, go 
rest a minute, go again. Eight rounds, rest for three minutes, and then do it again. Why these are tough? All that change of direction. It takes a lot to get these big primary movers, these quads going, and if you break down, stop, it takes a lot of energy to get them started again. So that changing direction, it's gonna tax you more. So again, one minute rest, eight rounds, three minute break, eight rounds again. All right, so last example out here on the field of how to get a good fat burning high intensity interval training session is is the 300 yard shuttle this is the hardest out of all of them so if you're coming out here to do four to six it's going to be plenty it's exactly what it sounds like 300 yard shuttle in 50 yard increments so 50 back and you got to do that six times That was a horrible guy. Thirty-five seconds. Fifty-four seventy. That's all. That one might make you guys throw up. Rest here is a little bit longer. Three minute rest. I'm out for the count. Oh, that's what happens when you're out of shape. Again, it's a whole lot easier to stay in shape than to get in shape. Coach Hutton said that. Why are you always judging me? Are you judging me because I believe in science? I don't know why you always have to be judging me. Because I only believe in science. So if you can't get outside, it's rainy, it's a million degrees, it's snowy, it's freezing, you gotta do your high intensity training in here, that's fine. You can pick any cardio pretty much in here, rower, bike, treadmill. If you have any kind of joint pain, the rower, the aerodyne's nice. Or if you only have a treadmill, you guys can do what I'm about to do, and that's incline sprints. Now, we're gonna put it at an intense incline where I can only do 15 to 25 seconds all out. That's still gonna be high intensity. We're gonna ramp it up here. I'm gonna get five minutes of walking just to kind of warm up. It's a little bit of that list we talked about. And then we're gonna keep bumping it up. So then I'm gonna turn it to about a 12% a incline and just start out fairly slow. And then from there, get faster, 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 faster. Also again, if you're starting out, 15 seconds is fine. The more you get used to this, you can ramp up the time getting up to 30, 40 seconds of incline sprints. That'll be an ass kicker. All right, now that we're warmed up, we got the incline set at 10, the speed set at nine. This is gonna be my first set. Again, this one, 20 seconds all out. I'm gonna be doing 10 rounds of this. So I'm gonna start off something that's manageable and then as I ramp it up, as it gets harder and harder and harder, the idea is to only rest a minute and jump back in and do it. Once you find that sweet spot, stay there for the duration. And what you'll find, those the first couple ones were easy, and it's gonna seem like you can do more and more and more. We're gonna find that sweet spot where you're you're not fully recovering. So make sure you're going all out, but still you're using good form on here. I've now maxed out the treadmill, so we're gonna see how it goes. Five. All right, so hopefully that was a good uh, good video of you guys showing you different high intensity workouts you can do. Again, one to two times per week. We include in most of our programs on fitness culture programming, hit twice a week if you're trying to get lean, and then once a week if you're trying to 
get bigger, get stronger. Uh, it's amazing though. It's nice to know that even though you get done, you're burning calories, more calories throughout the rest of the day when you're doing hit.